There is a quote from David Cameron that goes, The political system is broken, the economy is broken, and so is society. That is why people are so depressed about the state of our country. The economy, society, and politics are one and the same. They feed on each other. If the economy is booming, society is usually harmonious, and politics boastful. On the other hand, when the economy is weak, society starts to crack, and the politics turns on itself. It is perhaps in this light that the government is banging hard on getting the vaccination levels up to herd immunity levels quickly. The simple notion is to get rid of the sword hanging over our head so that we can open up the economy and get it moving again. When the economy is humming, the societal fissures might begin to mend, and politics will heal. Just how is Singapore faring in economy, society and politics? Stay on to find out more. I am not a paid influencer or a sycophant, but if you accept that Singapore is an island, has no natural resources, is blessed with some geographical advantage, and these are your core ingredients, let me know how you can devise a thriving economy that allows for the citizens to earn a living while enjoying relative peace and security in about as equitable a fashion as possible. And you might realize that we have lived that dream since 1965. These days, Singapore is beginning to remind me of history lessons about the Qing Dynasty's self-strengthening movement. It was deemed a failure because of the lack of unity and support, resulted in limited progress made, and the end result was sketchy at best. You might be curious about why the comparison between the Qing Dynasty to what is happening in Singapore. Well, when people start flogging the oximeter on the day of collection itself, it says a lot about some of the citizens' state of mind, and it is important to address the thinking at that level to work towards a greater vision. If Singapore has only its people and geography as resources, then the last thing you want to be doing is squabbling about the direction to go, which seems to be the case in Parliament these days where Sika is being discussed. We have always been a nation of migrants, and prior to our independence, it was the same too. Digressing for a moment, say, you are a local multi-star mission chef, and you only want to use Singapore fresh produce when cooking your atas food. You will be very limited in the kind of dishes that you can serve, because Singapore does not produce much in the way of meat and vegetables. In a nutshell, this chef will appeal to a small base and might go bust quite quickly. You might want to have access to a wider range of ingredients and produce. It is with this wider range of options that you can make all sorts of dishes. In trade deals, if there is no give and take, then we know how the relationship normally ends. Just saying, we have to acknowledge the end result and not be too focused on the here and now. It is all these little short runs that make the long run. As mentioned, there is already some concern about the politics in our regional neighborhood, with Myanmar dealing with unrest and international sanctions, protests in Thailand, Indonesia grappling with COVID-19, and now, with PM Muhyiddin in Malaysia about to lose his grip on power, there are a lot of challenges all around Singapore. If the countries around us are not doing well and stable, then investment to the region will dry up, and we will be affected further. Not asking you to gloat, but be thankful that we have some semblance of political stability. For now, it might just carry us through the day. The private bankers are usually happy as they will try to hawk the services for those seeking a safe haven. This video is for your information and is not meant to constitute financial advice, nor is it meant as a solicitation to trade. Please leave a comment. Just click on the subscribe button or simply like this video. Fortis Fortuna Adiavat. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. See you in the next video.